Father, we thank you so much for this uh, new day. Again, Lord, we recognize it as a gift from you. And uh, Lord, we just ask for your help in making the best of it. Uh, may we honor you in everything we do this day and bring glory to your name. Uh, may this time that we have together in Devos be encouraging and helpful uh, in our faith journey. We love you and thank you for it in your name. Amen. Um, so today we are going to pick up in the life of Joseph where we left off last week um, in chapter number 41 of, of Genesis. At this time, Joseph is 30 years old um, and or thereabouts, and he really at this point steps into the destiny that uh, that God, God had put on his life many years before. He hadn't fulfilled the destiny, but he begins to really step into it in this, in this moment. Um, I'm going to read quite a few passages out of uh, Genesis 41, so just uh, and skip around a little bit. So just hang with me here. Verse 1 says, When two full years had passed, this was since he had interpreted the dreams for... Uh, uh, Pharaoh's guys in prison. Um, Pharaoh then had a dream, right? So um, he, at this point, two years later, and we talked a little bit about that the last time we were together, um, but it was, it was two years later Pharaoh had this dream. Uh, verse number 8, In the morning his mind was troubled, so he sent for all the magicians and wise men of Egypt. Uh, and Pharaoh told, told them his dreams, but no one could interpret for, for him. Then the chief cupbearer said to Pharaoh, Today I am reminded of my shortcomings. Uh, and this is where he begins to tell Pharaoh about what happened two years ago when, when Joseph interpreted uh, his, his dream. And then skipping uh, to verse 10, Pharaoh was, was once angry with his servants, and he imprisoned me and the chief baker in the house of the captain of the guard. Each of us had a dream the same night, and each dream had a meaning of its own. Now a young Hebrew was there with us, a servant of the captain of the guard. We told him our dreams, and he interpreted them for us, giving each man interpretation of his dreams, and the things turned out exactly as he interpreted them to us. Um, I was restored to my position. The other man was impaled. So Pharaoh sent for Joseph, and he was quickly brought from the dungeon. Uh, when he had shaved and changed his clothes, he came before Pharaoh. Verse 37, the plan seemed good to Pharaoh. So, so Joseph had given Pharaoh the interpretation of the dreams and what he feels are to happen. You're going to have seven years of plenty and then seven years of, of famine store up uh, grain in that seven years of, of plenty. Uh, the plan seemed good to Pharaoh and to all his officials. So Pharaoh asked him, Can we find anyone like this man, one in whom the Spirit of God is? Isn't it amazing that uh, when, we, when we truly walk with the Lord, even those outside of the faith can recognize there's something different about us. They might not even be able to identify it as the Spirit of God is upon us, but they will be able to see there is something different about us. I pray that each one of us would leave that kind of mark on everyone that we come in contact with. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since God has made all this known to you, there is no one so discerning and as wise as you. You shall be in charge of my palace. Bless you. You shall be in charge of my palace, and all my people are to submit to your orders. Only with respect to the throne will I be greater than you. Again, bless you. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring from his finger and put it on Joseph's finger. He dressed him in robes of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. He made him ride in a chariot, second in command, and people shouted before him, Make way. Thus he put him in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, but without your word, no one will lift a hand or sneeze. 
<laughs> did that without Pharaoh. Um, um, so so I, I just want you to think about this for a moment. Um, Joseph goes to sleep in prison. Joseph wakes up in prison. And that very day, God promotes him to a place of power. And that evening, he would go to sleep in the palace and wake up in the palace every day for the rest of his life. Think of how quickly this seemed to have transpired. Now, we know that this actually didn't happen overnight. Um, it happened over a course of, of, of 13, 14 years, right? But this, this idea of Joseph rising to power out of prison, I mean, it, it happened so very quickly uh, in his life. God promoted him to a place of power um, quickly. Now, this, this, this happens a lot. And, and I think that one of the reasons that Joseph had so many tests in his life because God had such big plans for him and he wanted him to be prepared for this moment. Not everyone does well with this kind of power being put upon them so quickly. Right? Um, I, I saw this when I was pastoring a church. We had a guy that, um, that was a, an awesome parking lot attendant. Right? I mean, he was the most encouraging guy that you would ever see when people came up. The friendliest guy, I mean, with the other team members. I mean, he was, he was just the man out there. Um, and, and so we thought, you know what? This guy has done, done so well. Let's, let's put him as, as parking lot captain. We gave him some power, friends. I mean, right? Oh, we promoted him to parking lot captain. You know what happened the next week? Everybody on the parking lot team always wore the, the, these team t-shirts, right? The next week, this guy shows up in a neon colored vest um, with a bullhorn and a flashlight that looked like it could have been in a Star Wars movie. Um, and you say, well, that, that sounds okay. Well, the problem is, is he used that bull, bullhorn in the parking lot team meeting. And the, the, the parking lot team, man, what has happened to this guy? You know, and, and all of a sudden the people pulling up didn't see him as friendly, but he was like giving marching orders to everybody that came up. Guests would come in and, and they didn't know what they were walking into. A week before, he made you feel like you were coming to Disney World. Now it felt like you were going to prison. You know, and so uh, this guy obviously couldn't handle the power test. It was given to him too quickly. Uh, but, but I think in all of us, we will be faced with these kind of things at some point in our life where we are given some measure of power and God will, God will expect us or God will want us to handle that uh, in a God-honoring way. So I want to answer really quick three questions uh, this morning in, in, regards, in regards to this. Uh, number one, where does, where does power come from? Where does power come from? Psalm 62, 11 says, One thing God has spoken, two things I have heard, power belongs to you, God. All power comes from God. One of my favorite scriptures um, is when Jesus is standing before Pilate in, in John, John 19. Um, and he says, do you refuse to speak to me? Pilate said to Jesus, don't you realize that I have power to either free you or to crucify you? And I, I think in that moment that, you know, if Jesus, I'm sure it wasn't a laughing moment for Jesus, but it had to cause even a chuckle on the inside of Jesus for Pilate to say, do you not realize I have power over you? And, and, and inside I, had to, I have to think Jesus was like, mm, do you not realize what I could do in this moment, right? Do you, do you not realize you have no power over me? In fact, um, in, in fact, Jesus said, you have no power over me uh, unless it was given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. Jesus basically said, Violet, you, you think you have power that is your power, but you have no power unless God has granted it to you, even in these acts you're about to perform to me. 
Um, all power, all power comes from God. Um, now, sometimes we, we don't need to confuse that because I, I think sometimes as, as Christians, um, walking in our sort of churchy ways, sometimes we can, we can get this a little out of sorts. Uh, and, and this idea of, of all power belong to, uh, belonging to God and coming from God, we can cause that uh, to, to not just bring a humility on our life, but to bring a false humility. Um, let, make no mistake about it, all power comes from God, but God uses people, right? Um, I, another example from when I was, when I was pastoring, um, I, I was just a few years into, into our pastorate, and, and I'd preached a message, and, and I'd sort of conditioned myself that, you know, that if anyone ever said anything good or gave a compliment, um, that I would just say it was all God. It was, it was all God. And, you know, I think, I think possibly my motives were right, but, but it was really sort of this false sense of humility, right? Uh, and, and so I was, God cured me of this one day when I was walking off the stage, and this guy came up to me, this older, older man, he said, that was a really good sermon. And I said, it was all God. He said, it wasn't that good. <laughs> Maybe I was giving God a little too much credit, right? Um, you know, false, false humility is, is not a good thing for us to walk in. It's, it's great for us to give glory to God. But there's all, it's also okay for us to have this recognition that God places power and authority on people. And we need to understand that and we need, to, we need to walk in that and to be thankful for any power or authority that He has given into our care to, to steward. Um, we work hard and respond to God's giving of power with obedience and faithfulness. Um, but understanding that it is His, or His authority uh, has put us in a place of power or position. Uh, second question... Um, how do we get power? James 4.10 says, Humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will lift you up. 1 Peter 5, verses 5 and 6 says, In the same way, uh, you who are younger, submit yourself to your elders. All of you clothe yourself with humility towards one another, because God opposes the proud, but shows favor uh, to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that He might lift you up in due time. So all power comes from God, but God gives power to the humble. Not those who are walking in false humility, uh, but He gives power to the, to the humble. Um, have, you, have you ever wanted to really meet someone um, and... and you, you, finally, you finally get to meet that person. Maybe they were someone that you had always looked up to. You finally get to meet them, and you realize that person isn't really who I thought they were. Um, they're arrogant. They're egotistical. And, and I thought I wanted to meet them. But after I got to know them a little bit, I realized I, I really wished I would have never met that person. Right? Their picture on Facebook was a lot more wonderful than their real life profile. Right? Um, because that kind of ego and, and, and that kind of, of pride that some people walk in is so, so disgusting and I think is just really turns us off. Um, my my father in law, he, he was, um, he's a great gift giver. Right, and I think it's his love language. I know it's his love language, right? Uh, giving, giving gifts to people. And so, um, many, many years ago, um, he he went to Thailand, and when he came back from Thailand, he he brought me two pairs of these really, really nice crocodile skin. They were they were fancy, um, I, and I mean, I, I would have. I would have never picked them for myself, um, but I thought, hey, my father-in-law bought them, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wear them. And so I went, and 
there was this this car wash we used to go to and they had a shoe shine place at it and so I thought I'll get these things you know shined up and looking really good and and uh, for I for I go to go to church the next day on Sunday and so man I, I got these things shined up warm to the car wash place and I promise you that day everywhere I went people were looking at my shoes <laughs> I thought man this is pretty impressive. If I would have known this, I would have got some crocodile shoes a long time ago. I, I mean, literally everywhere I went, people were looking down at my shoes. And I'm, I'm thinking, I think I have arrived. Like, I, I mean, next step, they're going to be calling me, wanting me to do a TV program somewhere, right? I mean, this is this is big deal. Um, and then I, I get... A couple hours through the day and I looked down and I realized that uh, after the guy had shined my shoes my pants leg had got shoved down into my sock and so the whole day I'm walking around like this my pants leg up like that I think people are looking at my shoes but I don't think they're really looking at them crocodile shoes I think they're looking at the fact that half my leg is showing on one side uh, because of these these pants that are in my in my socks, um, pride pride can make us look really ridiculous, can it? Um, and and I have to believe at times uh, the way that we carry ourselves or issues of pride can really make us look ridiculous before the Lord, who created us and who has given us all power, and yet sometimes we walk as if we have created this for ourselves. And, and I don't believe God laughs at us, but I have to believe he looks at us and just cringes a little bit. Wow, do you not understand? Your, your pants in your sock there, right? Uh, do you not understand? I gave you this. I gave you this power. I gave you this position. Um, so it, it comes from God, but God gives power to the humble. Uh, verse 15 and 16 of Genesis 41 uh, Joseph replied to Pharaoh, I, I can't do what you're asking. This wasn't a false humility. This was a true humility. Joseph said, I can't do it. But God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. Uh, Joseph was walking in this power with uh, an utter dependence upon God. Now very quickly, why does power come? Let me, let me get this real quick. Acts 10.38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. Listen, God gives power to help people. God gives us power to help people. Uh, how many would agree that uh, there are a lot of people in need of help today? Would everyone agree with that? There's a lot of people in need of help. How many would believe that God has everything that is needed to help those who are in need? Right? So you could, if you wanted to put it in business terms, you could say, there's a lot of demand, but God has plenty of supply to meet the demand. What stands in between the, the need and the resources? What in, in people's needs and God's resources, what stands in between the demand of people's needs and the, the supply that God has. It's very simple. We do. And if, if God is going to get His resources to those in need, you know how He's going to do it? He's going to use us. He's going to use us. He's going to equip us in some way with His power. You might not even look at it as, as Him giving you, a pow uh, you power, but he's, he's giving us the power uh, to take His resources to those in need. Now, even this very day, God will challenge our, our hearts with this. Today, God wants to bring joy to someone in one of your classes. He's, there's someone who's in desperate need of His joy. One of your students is in desperate need of His joy. He's got all the joy they need. You know how He wants to get it to them? He wants to use you this day. There is somebody that you will come in contact this, this day within this community that is in need, in dire need of encouragement. Now, God has all the encouragement that they need. But do you know how He's going to choose to get it to them? He's going to choose you. 
He's going to give you the power to deliver His encouragement to them. There is someone who has such a need that God wants to bless in some incredible way today. And God wants to get that blessing to them. But do you know how He's going to do it? He's going to empower you to do it. The, 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 the question, I guess, really is, will we be sensitive enough to God's Holy Spirit and will we remain in a posture that is usable for God to get, what he, to get His supply to the need like Joseph was? Deuteronomy 8, 17 and 18, I close with this, says, You may say to yourself, My power and strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms His covenant which He swore to your ancestors, and it is today. We might say at some point, it was all my hard work and all of my effort that got me this place of power. Not so. Regardless our station in life, it was God who gives us that power. Let us walk humbly in it and let us be His vessels to get His supply to those in need. Father, we thank You. For your word, we ask you today, Lord, that as you entrust us with your power, as you entrust us, Lord, with responsibility to these students and to this community, that we would be faithful, oh God, that we would be faithful in our responsibility to not walk in pride, but to walk humbly before you and to get your supply to those in need and to help people this day with the power you entrust into our care. We thank you for this in your strong name. Amen. Bless you guys.